Well, tonight, the appropriately titled case of Donald J. Trump versus the United States of America is in the hands of a new judge, a judge who has been publicly exposed as having a dramatic conflict of interest in all matters related to Donald Trump, thanks to the now publicly exposed urgings by his wife to violate the law to overturn the results of the last presidential election. Clarence Thomas's wife, who is a lawyer, urged Republicans in state legislatures around the country to change the outcome of the presidential election in their states without any legal means to do that. Doing what Clarence Thomas's wife was urging them to do would have been a crime. Same with the frantic urgings Virginia Thomas was sending to the White House, including to Donald Trump's last chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Lawyer Virginia Thomas never once urged Republicans to overturn the election using legal means after all of the courts, including the Supreme Court, refused any legal approaches to overturning the election. Virginia, Virginia Thomas now pretends in her recent testimony to January 6th committee that because she did not advocate committing any specific crimes, her email and text rantings to Republicans around the country were all perfectly legal. No Supreme Court justice in history has ever been more publicly compromised by the conduct of a relative than Clarence Thomas, but today Clarence Thomas did not recuse himself. When Donald Trump's lawyers filed their appeal to the Supreme Court directly to Clarence Thomas, asking him to overrule the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals that ruled in favor of the Justice Department by excluding 100 classified documents seized by the FBI at Donald Trump's winter residence from examination by the special master in the case. The appeals court decision was a unanimous finding by a three-judge panel, which included two judges appointed by Donald Trump. Tonight, in a 37-page brief to the Supreme Court, the Trump lawyers said the 11th Circuit lacked jurisdiction to review the special master order, which authorized the review of all materials seized from President Trump's residence, including documents bearing classification markings. Accordingly, President Trump respectfully requests the court vacate the 11th Circuit's September 21st, 2022 stay order as to the authority of the special master to review documents bearing classification markings. The Trump appeal is asking the Supreme Court to allow the special master and the Trump lawyers to review the classified documents in the case. As with all Trump filings in this case, the Trump lawyers do not ever admit that the classified documents are classified documents, and they never suggest any reason why the documents marked classified might not be classified. And the Trump lawyers never suggest why any documents marked classified, even if no longer classified, could possibly legally remain in Donald Trump's possession. The appeals court ruling in favor of the government prosecutors in this case said plaintiff Trump does not have a possessory interest in the documents at issue, documents he neither owns nor has a personal interest in. The appeals court also said it doesn't matter whether the classified documents had ever been declassified. The appeals court said the declassification argument is a red herring because declassifying an official document would not change its content or render it personal. So even if we assumed that plaintiff Trump did declassify some or all of the documents, that would not explain why he has a personal interest in them. And even if he were, he has not identified a reason that he is entitled to them. In their appeal today, the Trump lawyers still offered absolutely no reason why Donald Trump would be entitled to these documents. And they made the mistake of using a word that they have not used before in describing Donald Trump's relationship to these documents. After saying in their Supreme Court appeal tonight, once again, that this case is, quote, essentially a document storage dispute. The Trump lawyers on page 30 went on to say 
The government has sought to criminalize President Trump's possession and management of his own personal and presidential records. Possession of those records is a crime. That is why Donald Trump's lawyers have been avoiding that word, possession. But on page 30 of their filing to Clarence Thomas tonight, the Trump lawyers stepped in it, saying the government has sought to criminalize Trump's possession of the records. Everywhere else in their filing, they refer to a former president's legal right to access to their presidential records. And that is true. The law requires that those records be in the government possession while former presidents have access to them. Former presidents are allowed to look at them. And if they follow correct procedure, after they've looked at them, they then immediately have to hand them right back to the owner of the documents, which is, of course, the federal government. In every filing the Trump lawyers have made in this case, they have been trying to suggest that possession of the documents by the former president is perfectly legal without ever using the word possession. But tonight they did. One of the Trump lawyers off repeated lines appears in tonight's Supreme Court brief saying, quote, the government has attempted to criminalize a document management dispute. But tonight, in one line of that same filing, the Trump lawyers admitted it's not a document management dispute. It is a document possession dispute. And what the Supreme Court should know by now is that possession of those documents by anyone other than the federal government is not legal. Clarence Thomas gave the Justice Department one week to file their reply to the Trump Supreme Court appeal. And so next Tuesday, October 11th, at this moment, at 10 p.m., at the latest, we will be discussing the Justice Department's answer to the Trump appeal to the Supreme Court unless the Department of Justice files that answer even sooner, which they could. The Trump appeal was filed today, the same day that the Washington Post reports that according to, quote, 14 officials in his administration, Donald Trump <clears throat> routinely mishandled classified records in the White House. Many of those sources told the Washington Post that they were not surprised at all by what the FBI found with their search warrant at Donald Trump's Florida residence. Donald Trump's second White House chief of staff, John Kelly, in a rare public comment about the case, told The Washington Post he wasn't surprised. He said that Trump rejected the Presidential Records Act entirely. He added that many people would regularly say to him, we have to capture these things. What he did doesn't surprise me at all, Kelly said. The Washington Post reported that Donald Trump personally participated in packing boxes at the White House for shipment to Florida and the Washington Post reports, even more importantly, that the 15 boxes that were sent from Florida to the National Archives in January of this year were packed by Donald Trump. The Post reports Trump himself eventually packed the boxes that were returned in January, people familiar with the matter said. After Donald Trump, personally packed those boxes and had them sent to the National Archives. When the FBI searched his home months after that, they found classified documents in his desk. So there is very strong evidence that when Donald Trump personally was packing those boxes to be sent to the National Archives, he was willfully withholding and continuing to willfully criminally possess other government documents, including classified documents in his desk. After sending that first shipment of 15 boxes to the National Archives in January of this year, Donald Trump asked a lawyer to say that all the government documents had then been re returned to the National Archives. But the lawyer refused to say that. The Washington Post reports Alex Cannon, a former Trump organization lawyer who worked for the campaign and for Trump after the presidency, told Trump he could not tell the archives. All the requested material had been returned. He told others he was not sure if other documents were still at the club 
and would be uncomfortable making such a claim. People familiar with the matter said other Trump advisors also encouraged Cannon not to make such a definitive statement. People familiar with the matter said. So the new evidence we have tonight in a possible criminal prosecution of Donald Trump includes evidence that Donald Trump personally decided what documents to send to Florida, and then he personally decided what documents to send back to the government and what documents to then keep illegally in his possession. And a lawyer who facilitated that first transfer of documents from Florida to the National Archives refused Donald Trump's request to say that all the documents were returned. And that lawyer was not the only person involved who did not believe that all the documents were returned. As the evidence mounts tonight in the case against Donald Trump, which is now in the hands of, Supreme, of the Supreme Court of the United States, where a third of the justices were appointed by Donald Trump,